where's the agreement or disagreement between you and Jordan Peterson on this? I just talked to Jordan about this <laughs> um, because you're very clear. It, it's it's kind of beautiful in the clarity in which you lay this out. Um, I wonder if Jordan has arrived at a similar kind of clarity. What, have you have you been able to draw any kind of lines between the the way the two of you yeah. see religion? Yeah. So there was a video released, uh, I think, like two or three weeks ago with Jordan and myself and Jonathan Pajot. Oh, I haven't watched that one yet. Yeah. And it's around this question, Lux. Mm -hmm. uh, he's basically sort of making, um, uh, he's putting together an argument for God. I mean, I think that's a fair way. I don't think he would object to me saying that. And. Um, and Jonathan Pajot is also a, um, well, Jonathan is a Christian. It's well, unclear what Jordan is. Um, and, and, and Jonathan's work is on symbolism and different mythologies and Christianity. Yes, especially Neoplatonic Christianity, yeah. which is very important. Um, I have a lot of respect. Well, I have a lot of respect for both of them, but I have a lot of respect for Jonathan. But in, in, in my participation in that dialogue, you can see me, well, repeatedly, uh, but uh, and, uh, but I think everybody, including Jordan, thought constructively challenging sort of the attempt to build a theistic model, and I was challenging it from a non-theistic perspective. So I think we don't um, agree in on certain sets of propositions, but there was a lot of there was also a lot of acknowledgement, um, and I think genuine appreciation on his part and Jonathan's part of. The arguments I was making. So they believe in the maybe the presupposition of like a supreme being. Not believe, but the the not not believe, but they see the power of that particular presupposition in uh, uh, being a source of meaning. I think that's relatively clear for me with Jordan. Jordan's a really complex guy, so uh, it's very hard to just like pin to my best sort of understanding. Yes, I think that's clearly the case. For Jordan, it's not the case for Jonathan. Jonathan is, remember I said, I was talking about modern atheism and theism. Jonathan is a guy who somehow went into icon carving and Maximus the Confessor and Eastern yeah. Orthodoxy and has come out of it the other end as a fifth century church father that is nevertheless being, rightfully so, found to be increasingly relevant to many people. I think so he's deeply old school. <laughs> yeah, I think he has he and I especially because neoplatonism is a non-theistic uh philosophical spirituality and it's a big part of eastern orthodoxy. He and I uh, uh, I think um he would say things like god doesn't exist. Which, what? You're a Christian, right? Mm -hmm. And then and he's being coy, but he'll say, well, god doesn't exist the way the cup exists or the table exists. The same kind of move I was making a few minutes ago. He'll say things like that. He he will emphasize the no thingness of ultimate reality, the no thingness of god because he's he is he's from that version of Christianity. Um, what you might call classical theism. But classical theism looks a lot more like non-theism than it looks like modern theism. That's so interesting. Yeah, that's really interesting. What What about, um, is there a line to be drawn between myth and religion in terms of its usefulness in man's search for meaning? So here's where Jordan and I are in much more, oh, actually all three of us are in significant agreement. Um, I said this in my series, but I, I want to say it again here. Uh, myths aren't stories about things that happened in the deep past that are largely irrelevant. Myths are stories about perennial or pertinent patterns that need to be brought into awareness. And they need to be brought into an awareness not just or primarily at the propositional level, but at those non-propositional levels. And I think that is what good mythos does. I, pref I, I prefer to use the Greek word because we've now turned the English word into a synonym for a widely, uh, uh, a widely believed falsehood. And I don't think, again, if you go back even to the, you know, the church fathers, I'm not a Christian, I'm not advocating for Christianity, right? But right, neither am I here to attack it, right? But if you, it, when, when they talk about reading these stories, they'll, right, they think the literal interpretation is the weakest and the least important, you move to the allegorical or the symbolic, to the moral, to the spiritual, the mystical. And that's where, right? So th they would say to you, 
well, uh, you know, but how is uh, how is the story of Adam and Eve true for you now? And I don't mean true for you in that relativistic se- sense. I mean, how is it pointing to a pattern in your life right now? So there is some sense in which the telling of this mythos becomes real in connecting to the patterns that kind of uh, captivate the public today. Sure. So for so you just keep telling the story. I mean, there's something about some of these stories that are just really good at being sticky to the patterns of of each generation. Yes. And they they'll stick to different patterns throughout time. They're just sticky. Yeah. In, in in powerful ways. Yes. And so we keep returning back to them again and again and again. And and it, it it's important to see that some of these stories are recursive. They're myths about one particular set of patterns. They're they're myths about right, not 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 just the important pattern. Like you get the, you know, Jordan stuff about there's heroes and myths are trying to uh, make us understand the the need for being heroic in our own lives. One of the things I like to put in counterbalance to that is the Greek also have myths of hubris, right? That counterbalance the heroic, right? But then there are myths that are not about those deeply important patterns, but they're myths about religio itself that the way we're religio means to bind to connect the way relevance realization connects us and so the point of the myth is not notice that pattern or notice that pattern or notice that pattern it's notice how all of these patterns are emerging and what does that say about us and reality and those myths those myths um i think um are genuinely profound 